Right guys, I'm Dave. Um, I own the Buclew Arms Hotel in Moffat. And probably the most, one of the most important things in my life is this guy here. His name's Blue. And if you have a good look at the camera, you'll see he's got one blue eye. It started when, really when I was a kid. Um, I used to have a moped with pedals, a puk, I think it was called. In Africa, we didn't have too much health and safety, so I used to go riding in the bush. My dogs used to run along the side and then just jump on the saddle. And off I used to go all day riding on, on a little motorbike through the bush, and they just used to sit there. Never fell off. They occasionally would jump off if they saw something they wanted to chase and then just run up. And it was a little 39, 49 cc, so they could catch up easy enough. When I came to this country, I really missed a dog. I didn't have one when I, we first arrived because times were going to be very hard for us having left uh, Zimbabwe and we kind of lost everything. And my wife and I decided last year enough's enough. Got it, wanted to get a dog and decided because I've only got a motorbike, she's got a car and a bike, but I've only got the bike, that it would have to be a, a pretty agile dog wanting to love motorcycling adventure. We also decided in wisdom that we were not going to get a puppy for at least three months, but we would go and look around at every dog available so we could learn the trade, understand about breeders, because I hear terrible stories. Once we decided, we, we went and looked at a litter. I had six litters to go and ride around that day. It was going to be a good excuse just to go ride, ride around the countryside looking at puppy, puppy dogs. The very first one we went to is an interesting one. Um, the parent was a French bulldog of all things, and I wanted a mongrel. I always wanted a mongrel because that's what I've always had. I'm a dog dog. <laughs> nothing designer, nothing special, nothing clever. So the very first one we went to, its mother was a French bulldog. I didn't know much more else about it. And then we, we pitched up and uh, we actually saw this guy in a litter of six. As you can see, he looks about 16 years old. When he was a puppy, he looked about 10 years old, uh, at six weeks old. And he looked at me with his one blue eye and uh, he kind of picked me because he did a clever thing when all these other the litter was running around, he went to the top and ambushed them and then jumped behind me, let me love him a little bit and when they came around again, he ambushed them again and I thought, ha this guy's smart. Having said three months, no dog, <clears throat> we walked away with a puppy on our first day, totally unprepared, not geared for it, just knowing that what we wanted to do. I was very fortunate that I've, I've got an exceptionally good friend, uh, my best friend by a long shot, who's an engineer and does motorbike parts. So I went to see him and I said, best mate in the whole world, I've got no money, but I want a dog box. I've got a plan, I can draw it for you. So I designed it and, and it was a box. <laughs> and it had a hole in the top where his head. And that was, that was the, the length and breadth of my design. And he proceeded to make a, a number of prototypes. He claims that he made 12 prototypes. One day we went and collected my, my first prototype, brought a chair. We really cocked up uh, in the beginning, I've got to admit. Um, when I tried to put him in, I, I didn't think it through, but later on I'll show you my box. It's got a lid and a back part, and I, I didn't take the lid off. I stuck him through the hole, like sticking a dog in a little hole cave, and he didn't particularly like that. And I thought, ah, I've got a dog that doesn't like going in the box. What am I going to do? Stupid. Stupid, me, not the dog. I, we just stopped straight away. I didn't want to make a big issue out of it. Left it for about a week. A week later, took the lid off, picked him up, put him in, and uh, it was, he just sat there. And I put the lid on and he just sat there. And then I, I took off with my son behind me, talking to me through the mics, telling me that all was okay. He didn't even bumble, fumble, mumble, nothing. He just sat there looking at the world but he was already cut, quite used to looking at the car. We have got a little uh, stretch leash that goes from the, from the base and it's anchored to his chest. And I had designed it that it would just, he could sit comfortably and it would just be taut before the elastic took effect. Later on, as he got very familiar with it, I've put a six inch extension on, which is he loves now, because now he stands up like he's riding a chariot and he thinks he's Lord Muck especially when he goes through towns and he looks at all the people. And whenever I overtake a truck or a, or a car with people in, he looks sideways and pulls himself up and has a good look at them. Am I worried he's going to jump out? Not a chance. He's with me all the time. He adores it. All I've got to do is pick up my helmet and his, his bum waggles from side to side to side to side that he can hardly walk because he wants to get in. When I do bring him in the van, he sulks. In fact, this morning he sulked because I brought him in the van and he doesn't want to talk to me for about an hour. In about two weeks time, I'm off to the Pyrenees. He's going in his box. The blanket that he sits on in there is going to be the blanket that he sleeps on on tour. He's got a collapsible box. 
that we put his water and his food in. He eats anything and everything because he's, he's a man's man, he's a dog's dog. He's a bad dog, I'm a dog. He loves rivers, loves walks, loves me, loves my motorbike. Mm. I can offer all four of those things. What I have got is I've got the two wing mirrors. So I've got my normal wing mirrors and I've got my, my dog mirrors. And those are aimed over my shoulder, both of them, because he likes to sit out with his head either one side and then when there's more activity the other side he just turns and turns the other way. So this way now I, I can see him. Not because of trust, trust is there. I've got no issue, I could stop if there's pheasant which he likes to chase. Once he's in the box he doesn't chase pheasants. So it's not about trust but it's all about me enjoying the experience with him. I can honestly tell you that there is nothing more exciting for me than looking in my mirrors, seeing this boy and, and I want to be honest, it might sound cheesy, he looks at me quite frequently just gives me the eyeball, gives me the eyeball in either mirror. And I hope it's not coincidence because he's still a puppy and we're still training him. But twice recently, he's looked at me and when he's seen that I've got contact with him, he's barked. So I have stopped, taken him off and let him go for a run. And then he's, and I've seen that he's done his business. So that's quite interesting that if I'm hoping that that is the case that he's letting me know. And I think it is personally, when I get to nice quiet open country or small roads, I trust him. I let him off the box and I say, go free, run free, and he runs. He'll stay within about 100 meters, maybe 200 meters of me. But the three times that I've called him and he didn't come back straight away, it was quite simple. I pressed my starter button and he came galloping, pounding through and jumped up on me, ready, let's go, where are we going, where are we going, where are we going? And that, that is his whole approach to motorcycling is just how I watch him when I press that starter button that he's, he's up for it all the time. The one part that maybe I shouldn't be embarrassed about but I am very embarrassed about it is on three occasions I've stopped in a parking place and dogs have got out of another car and he's seen them and he swaggers. He swaggers like I'm a bloody dog and, all, and he changes his walk until they've gone and then he walks properly again so whether he thinks I'm a bloody barker and therefore walks like that, I don't know, but he does. He swaggers and it's embarrassing, especially if other people know him and they think, what the hell. He's done three, 450 mile days in preparation of the Pyrenees. And although there the mileage, we're only really, if I'm honest, we're going to be looking at 250, maybe the, there's two or three days, it'll be a 300 mile day. I took him on three, 450 mile days in a row and he was absolutely fine. On the third day when I said, let's go for a long ride, he was up for it, so that was quite cool. He's really brought a new dimension into my riding. I love riding, I'm a, I'm a passionate, passionate rider. I've been riding a bike since I was eight and nothing's changed. But I, I've got to admit, this guy has brought something to riding that I just didn't know existed before. And that's why my wing mirrors are so good because I can share that experience with him and he loves it, absolutely adores it.